What is hyperspectral imaging? We can begin to answer this by thinking about the similarities between light and sound. So light and sound are both waves, which means that they have a frequency at which they oscillate. And this frequency can tell us lots more information about the light or the sound. So with sound, the frequency tells us the pitch that we're going to hear. With light, the frequency tells us the colour that we're going to see. Now, believe it or not, conventional colour cameras, like you might see in a smartphone or in a webcam, actually only detect three frequencies, only three colours. So that's a low frequency red, a mid frequency green, and a high frequency blue. And that's quite limited. That's like handing a pianist a piano and saying, OK, look, you can only play three of these notes, three of these frequencies. And so you would have a low frequency, like red, you would have a high frequency, like blue, and you have a middle frequency, like green. Now, in hyperspectral imaging, what we want to do is we want to try and detect many, many more colours. We want to have many, many more frequencies, so we can have 10 or even 100 different colours that we're detecting. And this gives us much richer information about the object that we're imaging. So to help us understand how that works, we can first look at how cameras work. So I've got a camera here, and if we look into this camera, where the light would enter, you can see there's a sort of black, shiny surface. And that's the sensor, that's the part of the camera that turns the light coming in into an electrical signal which we can send to a computer to form an image. Now if we could look at that sensor really closely, you'd see a grid pattern on the sensor. And each square in that grid is what we call a pixel. And each of those pixels detects the light, turns it into an electrical signal, and that becomes one point in our final image. So how do we get the colour information? So to get colour information we use filters, and what I've got here is a green filter. And if you look through this you can probably see that everything behind it looks green. And that's because the filter is only allowing green light to pass through it to the camera. And if I place this in front of the camera you'll actually see that the entire image becomes green. Now what we can do is we can actually shrink this down and place it on top of one of the pixels in our camera. And that means that pixel then becomes a green detecting pixel. And if we do this for red, green and blue, we end up with a red, green, blue filter pattern on the camera and that becomes a colour camera. And with hyperspectral imaging we just take this one step further. So we apply 10, 20 or 100 filters and that means the final image then is 10, 20 or 100 colours and that's a hyperspectral image. I'm Siri and I'm a PhD student in the Vision Lab group at the University of Cambridge.